Hi, my name is Walid Rasamni. I'm the CEO of one of the largest car distribution groups in Lebanon. I was always fond of sports car. And in all humbleness, I do own a nice selection of automobiles, such as two Lamborghinis, an Aventador and a Huracan Performante, three Ferraris, a Speciale, Scuderia, and Stradale. I also own few Porsches, air-cooled, liquid-cooled, most of them turbos and turbo S. The reason I'm mentioning this is not to boast or brag about cars I have, but to simply qualify myself as someone who has intimate knowledge of sports cars. I find driving each of them exhilarating and intoxicating, each in its own way. And I have never had any accidents, nor any life-threatening issue, nor even a major problem in any of the many cars I own. I'm afraid I cannot say the same about my McLaren 720S, which almost ended my life. The real reason I'm in a position to be addressing you today is because of the grace of God and Saint Charbel, the national saint of Lebanon. Some six months ago, as I was cruising in my 720S at going at 80, 90 kilometers per hour, on an early Sunday morning, with no traffic in sight, something very dramatic and frightening happened to me. As soon as I pressed the accelerator, my car went through a very violent swerve from left to right, and I found myself with absolutely no control whatsoever over it. To my good fortune, the traffic was very light, and the highway was very wide, so I did not crash the car. In my entire 50 years of driving sports cars, I have never found myself anywhere near such a traumatic experience ever. The very next day of this very tragic experience, I took my car to the McLaren distributor in Lebanon and told them that my 720S came literally close to killing me on that day before. After checking my car, they informed me that the traction control on the car was defective and that they had repaired it and replaced the accumulators of all four shock absorbers. On Christmas Day 2021, as I was cruising up a straight, wide, and dry, and I have to emphasize the word dry highway, at about 90 kilometers per hour, the same exact thing occurred again. The instant I pressed the accelerator, the car went completely out of control, swerving violently from left to right, hitting a low level wall on the side and flying, flying off in the air to a distance of about 50 meters and the height of about 15 meters to finally crash in a heavily dense and very dry brush area. Throughout this ordeal, I remained conscious. And when the car hit the ground from a height of 15 meters, I felt as though every bone in my body had been crushed. I tried frantically to get out of the car because of the heavy smell of gasoline and the dry brush area for the slightest spark could have set the car ablaze and be caught in it. The smell of gasoline was so overwhelming and I hysterically wanted to get out of the car, fearing that it would get engulfed by the flames at any second. But there was absolutely no way the door would open. I even tried to get out of the driver's side window, but it was too small. In ten, the 10 minutes, I waited before the rescue team arrived and pried open the door seemed like eternity because of the constant and unbearable fear experienced of burning alive inside my 720S. After getting me out, I was taken to a nearby hospital where I had suffered from severe bruises all over my body and four fractures to my pelvis. These fractures have so far kept me six weeks in bed 
lying constantly on my back without the possibilities of walking even to the restroom. It is worthwhile mentioning that throughout this accident, only the driver's door airbag opened. It is also worthwhile mentioning that at no point did I disable the traction control, since I'm quite aware how dangerous this could be to a car with 720 horsepower and with a high turbo boost. Also, the Pirelli MC tires on the car were in fairly good condition. While in the hospital, I started corresponding with McLaren, describing to them in details what had happened to me and urging them to dispatch experts to examine my car and determine the real cause of the accident, as well as come up with remedies and possibly issue a recall on all 720S worldwide. This in order to avoid the kind of accident I was subjected to, which could have ended up in a fatality. Unfortunately, McLaren did not do anything about my communications. They kept stalling and coming up with excuses about the involvement of my insurance company in the investigation process. Frivolous excuses to find reasons not to do anything about the entire situation. Imagine an accident where McLaren, McLaren's own client, had invested a considerable amount of money in their own car, a car that almost killed me. And McLaren did not deem it appropriate to have their expert travel to Lebanon or even their own distributor in Lebanon investigate that accident, especially after all my personal pleas to them. Moreover, as it turned out, my accident was not an isolated case in the annals of 720S accidents in the world. For many accidents, almost identical to mine, have happened worldwide. Accidents that reflect the same exact pattern and blueprints of violent, out of control swerves as mine. I refer you to the Dubai yellow 720S, the white 720S in Singapore, both of which crashed on a straight highway, as well as the many other crashes around the world in which all the vehicles suffered total losses. I'm pleading now with every owner of a 720S in the world, you have to be careful when driving your 720S because you are sitting literally on a ticking bomb. And I urge you to question McLaren about this very serious and potentially deadly flaw in their cars. You could be next. Why haven't McLaren so far done anything about this potential fatal problem when they are fully aware of its existence on their 720S? And how many people will have to suffer serious injury as I did or even lose their lives before McLaren begins investigating and start resolving this very serious and potentially deadly defect in their vehicles? That's a question I leave for McLaren to answer. Owners of 720S who have encountered problems such as the one in the video, you can please contact me on my below email address. Thank you so much for your time.